It is time for another edition of 10 After, after K-State beats Alabama State 86-41. to Inside of Bramlage Call seem to move to 6-3 and three on the season. Matt Hall of K-State Online, joined, of course, by Grant Flanders, our basketball. I was going to say expert. Doo, but it's, right? <laughs> exactly. <laughs> this, of course, is presented by People State Bank and Legacy Insurance. Please check them out. They've got, I believe, 23 locations in the state of Kansas. They have, like, two ATMs, two locations in Manhattan, six ATMs in Manhattan. That's People State Bank, specifically. But we only have 10 minutes here in 10 after, so let's get to the game, Flanders. Let's do it. I want to tell you something. I don't know if you know this yet, but I saw it from KSU underscore fan. He shared this. K-State set the record tonight for the highest effective field goal percentage in Ken Palm since, it was, uh, since the stat was kept starting back in 2002. Effective field goal percentage is just a combination of both two-pointers and three-pointers. Three-pointers worth more, blah, 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 blah. Point is... Most efficient shooting game of any team ever, ever? from that perspective. But since 2002. Christmas. Well, let's look at the line, though, Flanders. 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 <laughs> they went 35 of 56 overall in field goals, 12 of 22 from three. That's pretty good. The free yep. throws didn't count into it, only four of six. Point is, Flanders, K-State was very good offensively tonight, especially in the first and half. They sh- yeah, they sure were. I, I, it's just surprising that's ever for ever. Ken Palm. Yeah, and he also said, that. I believe it was the fifth or sixth highest defensive points per possession Allowed in Kim Palm, well, the wow. Kim Palm tracking in yeah. 2002. So, number one offense as far as E field goal percentage in 2002, and like number five or number six yeah. defense. So, best all around game for K State so far this season. Alabama State is one and eight, unfortunately. Yeah, uh, that is here. that is one thing. But I mean, so Florida A and M last week was yeah. only had one win under their belt, and K State seemed to struggle more than they did in this one. I think K State showed a lot of good things on offense, efficiency wise. Uh, Xavier Sneed took over the game for a portion of that. Couldn't miss in the first half, it seemed like. No, at one he point. could not. And yeah, just a really all around good game from the Cats. Let's start with the X for a second yep. because a number of guys helped out tonight, but Xavier Sneed finished with 20 points. He had 14 five minutes into this game. Oof. He had his first four threes. The fourth one, Flanders, he I was know. off balance, falling Gosh. to his left, is a bad shot, just drained it. I didn't think he was going to miss tonight for a while. I thought you might know with this, Ski Jones once scored 62 or 64 in this building. Wow. Can't remember nope. which one it was in the NIT against Fresno uh-huh. State. And he played like 28 minutes when he did it, Flanders. <laughs> That's he had incredible. 60 points plus in 28 minutes. I thought Xavier Steen was going to get there tonight. Just 20, but still a very good game for Very Max. good game. 8 of 10 from the field, 4 of 6 from three-point line. Like you said, I mean, four of those threes coming early and – and that's, that's what he was doing. Yeah, off balance, didn't matter. He had his shot going and then defensively still doing amazing things. I mean, probably his best game of the year so yeah. far. And looking up, six rebounds as well from him. Yep. And he four also assists, had four right? assists. Yeah, three turnovers, which is the blemish. But besides that, a really good game for Max. Two more players in double figures I want to ask you about. Grant Flanders. They both have the same last name of Gordon. It's Dejuan Gordon Ooh. and Antonio Gordon. Both had 13 points tonight. Dejuan Gordon played under 20 minutes. Antonio right at 27. What do you think? Thinks. What are your thoughts on the two freshmen this some evening? Some of the most consistent players so far this season for the Wildcats, I think, because if you look at some of my report cards I put out after games, they I look con- at them. Yeah, they continually get two or three stars, which isn't an easy thing to do on my report cards. If 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 you look at them before, I try to be. Um, but yeah, those two have been have filled their role perfectly. Antonio coming in and starting uh, since Montavious has gotten injured and. And he's been very good. You know, he went five of seven from the field in this one, hit three out of five three pointers, yep. where which is what you love to see out of him. And eight rebounds, still very effective on the boards for Antonio. And then Dejuan off the bench, he played almost 20 minutes, five of eight from the field, three of four from downtown. I didn't even realize he shot it that well from deep for his 13 points. So yeah, really great game from the two frosh. I want to come back to talking about players one by one, but the big news today outside of this win, of yeah. course, was Sean Williams transferring, leaving the program in the transfer portal. So I'll ask you about that, but I want to ask you about something different related to that first that surprised me. K-State had nine scholarship players to use tonight because Sean Williams is gone. Yep. Montavious Murphy sat out another game. James Love, Nigel Shad, both unavailable. Mm-hmm. Not one player for K-State. I know it's a blowout, but played 30 minutes in this game. Yeah. I think it's pretty good work by the coaching staff. Even a blowout to make sure with only nine guys, no one plays 30 minutes. So yep. thoughts on just the workload tonight yep. and then the Sean Williams departure. Yeah, I mean, yeah, let's start with the workload. and It is, it is cool to see and all of them scored as well, all the way down yep. to Pearson McAtee. We, who played over 10 minutes, too. Yeah, he too. had six tonight. Pierce yeah, McAtee six. Did. Three, three or four up, from yep. the floor. Very nice stuff from him. So, yeah, I mean, I, I obviously it is tough losing a guy to the transfer portal in Sean, Sean Williams, who had a lot of potential, and it's it's sad to see him go. But K-State, obviously, I think is going to be just fine. And this game went to show that. David Sloan, he took 21 minutes uh, off the bench, and he played really well, three yep. of five, one of two from outside for his seven points and four assists. So, I, yes, it, it's, it sucks to see Sean Williams go with the potential he had. 
but I think K-State's going to be just fine. This is the game they needed, too, to show that they can still play good games. And, yeah, they've struggled against some poor competition early in this season, but now against poor competition, they're showing how they can dominate on both ends of the floor, even without Sean Williams. Well said. Now, in 10 after, we have 10 minutes, so I can't talk recruiting too long with you, but you asked Coach Roy about recruiting after the game, what this means. Yeah. K-State was technically a scholarship over heading in the next mm -hmm. season. If everyone had come back, they knew what they were going to do yep. already, I'm sure. Now they're pegged at 13. Mm -hmm. If they're still going to lose a guy like they probably expect to, a guy or two, they can add one or two guys. Yep. Did you get the sense at all that losing Sean Williams changed what they're looking for, or are they still looking for the same kind of thing? Yeah, initially it seems like they're still looking for the same kind of thing. Coach did not seem to jump at the notion that, oops, we need to get a guard since Sean Williams is on his way out. Um, obviously, this K-State team and, and Coach Weber love guards. They'll always be on the lookout for those. But for 2020, it does seem like if they're going to add one more, their, their focus is still on an athletic big, uh, someone more like a Mac type, you know, right. who can – defend well and still be a, a solid player on that end so that's what they're going to be looking for from here no doubt about it um one other player i want to reference who's also a point guard at least played point guard tonight for k-state was cartier jada yeah. nice game for cardi really he had 10 assists he had those 10 assists by the 15 minute mark of the second half yep. so within the first 25 minutes of the game he had 10 assists so he finished with 10. he is the first wildcat to have 10 assists in a game since marcus foster 2014. Yep. tom gilbert told me that i didn't know it myself I but Cardi's line, just talk through that, man. You know, gets eight points, only took five shots, so he's efficient. Yep. Ten assists to two turnovers. If you add Cardi and, and Davis Sloan together, you get 14 assists against three turnovers. Pretty good from your point guard. Yeah, I, li I like this game from Cardi. You know, he, he comes into this game knowing he doesn't have to be a, a scorer that just finding his shot. Like, I think he felt against Marquette, and he wasn't efficient, and, and they struggled in that category. But in this game, he really just tried to find guys. You, you saw he never tried to rush anything, and he was all, always on the lookout to help set his his teammates up you saw him find Antonio for a couple of triples a couple of other guys for some three-pointers and yeah 10 assists it would have been cool to see him get one more bucket to right. get that double double because he did finish eight of eight points on three of five shooting but yeah solid game from him I do want to see on Saturday him go back into that mode of trying to take over the game and, and see if he can be efficient scoring because against good competition they're gonna need it from him but in this one against Alabama State, he did his part, got his 10 assists, had six rebounds as well, solid game. No doubt about it. You're going to have a very shiny-looking report card for this one, I think. Yeah, it's going to be so. It's going to be hard to give bad scores be for one. this one. You asked two good questions in postgame, I would say. Two more than you ever had before, for, <laughs> for the record. Um, no, two very good questions. The other one you asked was what to expect from Mississippi State. Now, we don't have to know about players just yet, yep. but what kind of sense Bruce Weber, at least to me, came off pretty respectful and thinks yeah. this is a very good team they're going to play on Saturday. It sounds like they have some guys, especially uh, down low. Yep. He, he, he started off with some guys that he's going to have to watch out for. As far as the big men goes, can't remember their names exactly, but that is what I would look out for Mississippi State. Max going to have to have a big game, I'm sure, stepping up in, in the spotlight, which I think in Newark, or New or yeah, New Jersey, Jersey. I don't know. Whatever yeah. the case, I think out there, with this, when the bright's the lightest, Mac is going to have <laughs> no doubt a about game. it. <laughs> no doubt about it. So it is a big opportunity. Of course, it's not the last chance yep. for big non-conference when they play Alabama later. They have St. Yep. Louis and Kansas City next, mm -hmm. but you can't let all these fade away. Put you on the spot here, Montavious Murphy. You heard the post game, right? Yeah. When Bruce Weber talked uh -huh. about him, is he going to play Saturday? Yes or no? You, you, you got to pick one. <sighs> Yeah, uh, I'm going to say no. Because what? I think he's going to play. You're I, crazy. I, I, and I, I, that's what I want to hear. I hope yeah. he does play. But Coach, the, the, the little thing I had to, had to hear from Coach was when he, I think he was answering my question, mm -hmm. saying, going into it, saying, Antonio, Mac, and Levi are going to have to be I very big. And he didn't add in Monty. So, I mean, I'm sure he's just being very wise with his words just in case Monty doesn't play. And I'm sure there's still a chance he does, but I'm going off that. He's not going to play. I caught the same Saturday. thing. He did say earlier, though, that maybe he could play. We'll see. He did practice some yep. already. Montavis yep. Murphy has. He'll practice more this week. Mm -hmm. He even said there's probably a slight chance they could have James Love for this game. Probably pretty remote. Yep. Probably less likely than Montavious Murphy. But you talked about it. We'll get to the names and we're really breaking on Mississippi State here when we get closer to the game. But it's a game they're going to need bigs. And right now, if you only have Mac and Levi and then Antonio Gordon, it leaves you hurting a little bit. We can go 10 over on this. Don't forget that. Well, now you've wasted the time that I was going to use those 10 seconds for because we don't want to go under or else people will tell us exactly. it's under. And now we're just mumbling to get to that exact, that exact time. K-State wins tonight over Alabama State to move to 66-3 on the season. The no score was 86-41. to 41. A great performance on offense, great performance on defense. Really appreciate the work tonight from Logan Mance taking pictures for us, also taking video. Grant Flanders did a great job getting this microphone warmed up for me and also to talk tonight, ask good questions in the postgame, and you took good video. So for Flando, for Logan, for Matt, 
Logan, can you say <laughs> something for us? Uh, maybe you should uh, maybe maybe tell your friends. I don't know. Maybe, maybe. <laughs> tell your friends. 